Vinyl community. Welcome to another video with a record spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Nirvana Nevermind 30th Anniversary Super Deluxe Vinyl Box Set. Fairly recently, during the tail end of 2021, uh, Nirvana's Nevermind celebrated a 30th anniversary, such a landmark album in the genre of grunge, and just an overall solid album in general. And the folks at Universal Music decided to capitalize on the anniversary of the album and give us yet another deluxe version of the album. This is only coming 10 years after they had given us a 20th anniversary edition, but this time around we have a 30th anniversary version. Now, this first came out on CD some months back, and of course, since the uh, the vinyl counterpart is quite a monolith to press up, it got pushed back a little bit, so here it is finally coming in May of 2022, and we are going to unbox it here on the channel. So here it is right here. It is still sealed, and there is the hype sticker as well which states Nirvana 30th Anniversary Edition, Nevermind 8 LPs, 180 gram plus 7 inch, Nevermind newly remastered plus 4 concerts, Amsterdam, California, Australia, and Japan, 77 total tracks, 53 unreleased live tracks, 40 page hardcover book with unreleased photos. And overall, the front of the box is nicely designed with the album cover featured in the center with various like posters and advertisements kind of centered like a collage almost kind of as, as like a nice border and then here is the track list of all the contents of the box here and i'll kind of go in detail about some of these shows as we dig into the box so let's uh let's take the shrink wrap off this and all right get this whole thing off salvage the hype sticker later off camera and also just for the for the sake of showcasing, here is the spine of the box as well. And as you can see, it is quite a hefty type package. And here are all the contents here. So we are going to be starting off with the main focal point of this box set. And that is the Nevermind album itself. And here it is here. This is a nice sort of matte tip-on style jacket. Now, this was released uh, on its own separately, um, I think at the same time as the CD box that had come out. And this was marketed as being limited edition and whatnot, um, which is pretty unique. And this is an all-new remastering, which I'm going to get into once we um, take a look at the record. And this jacket, oh, very interesting. I see what they did here. So it comes with a gatefold. Um, the original did not come with a gatefold, but that is a very cool uh, period photo of the band. And right off the bat, I hear something moving in here, and that is exactly what I think it is, but we're going to get into that after I showcase everything. Uh, inside the uh, gatefold is the insert. This is, this is faithful to the original. And we take the record out. Polyline sleeves, nice touch. And here is the vinyl, and as you can see, it comes on that DGC label. Nice pressing overall. This was pressed over at, if I could decipher this correctly, looks like this was done over at GZ Vinyl in the Czech Republic, but there's various other like subsidiary companies based around North America as well as Canada. And this pressing was mastered by Ryan K. Smith at Sterling Sound. And there was all kinds of speculation as to, um, I guess, comparisons between this new version done by Ryan, as well as the other pressing that is out there, never mind, which was cut by Bernie Grunman, uh, which was actually the uh, stampers for that pressing were used for the ORG pressing, uh, which came out, I want to say, around the late 2000s. And if um, memory serves me correct, that is the last all analog pressing of Nevermind, since the master tapes are indeed destroyed due to the universal fire. Um, in terms of this, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that this was digitally sourced, but uh, Ryan K. Smith does fantastic work nonetheless. So, and I do have that Bernie Grunman cut in my collection already, so I will be quite curious to see how they both sound side by side. But featured inside the other opening of this jacket, we have a seven inch 
which features a couple of bonus cuts. So we have Endless Nameless, uh, which was the kind of hidden bonus track on the album, which came after uh, Something in the Way. And then we have some B-sides. Um, actually, I would say they're either B-sides or EP tracks, uh, Even in his, in his Youth and Aneurysm. And I believe those appeared on an Australian EP. The name is escaping me right now. But... Um, it is cool that it is featured here. And also, this 7-inch is also available with the album itself as a standalone piece. Standalone with the album, not the 7-inch by itself. Ah, oh, nice. So they put the 7-inch in a nice polyline sleeve as well. And here is the 7-inch there. Overall, very solid stuff. Cool to get these extra tracks on top of the album. And moving onward... Next up, now, the cool thing with this 30th anniversary set, and just to kind of give you a basis of comparison between the 20th anniversary and the 30th anniversary, 20th featured, of course, the album remastered, uh, various BBC sessions, B-sides, um, the live show at the Paramount, and that was on CD as well as DVD. But um, in this case, uh, which I think is nice, that way there's no like overlapping, this is almost exclusively devoted to live material that has been, for the most part, in its full form unreleased. But I will kind of explain some backstory behind certain shows that are featured here, because some of them have appeared elsewhere in some cases. So I'm just going to pull out the first live show that we have here. And this is live in Amsterdam and the Netherlands, November 25th, 1991. This is at the Paradiso awesome live shot here and in a lot of cases with the shows featured in this set um they're definitely radio broadcasts that have been kind of circulating in the legal bootleg kind of circles but um i think it's great that um universal um jumped the gun to uh get these out officially because nirvana live recordings are truly phenomenal and in fact some of the tracks from these shows that are going to be featured in this set um some of which do appear on the live album from the uh, muddy banks of wishka so it's nice to get them in their full you know entirety length and here is another gatefold jacket with an awesome live shot there which is very cool and inside, here's the label itself. So we have a nice kind of custom label here, which is nice and unique for the album's anniversary. And just by looking, just for the sake of clarification, uh, the live stuff was also mastered by Ryan K. Smith. So we did all the mastering across the board. And here's the other one kind of the same across the board so I'm not necessarily going to take out everything but you pretty much get the general gist of it and moving onward here um, and also I should uh, mention obviously as you can tell this one was a double LP show and this right here is a single this one here is live in Del Mar California December 28th 1991 this is at the Pat O'Brien Pavilion at the Del Mar Fairgrounds cool color shot there the band here's the back with the track list and here is the gatefold so we kind of have that photo that was featured on the insert of the album and then we have a cool live shot here. So overall, very beautifully designed, I have to say. And also, the, even the live shows alone do come in nice, thick, sturdy, tip-on style jackets, uh, which is awesome. And then here are the labels for that. And then the next show featured here. This one's another double. This is live in Melbourne, Australia for Triple J, February 1st, 1992. And this is at the Palace in St. Kilda. Another great uh, live audience shot there. And then here's a cool band photograph on that side. And there's the label there. I do have to say, um, this is probably going to be a marathon <laughs> to try to listen to in roughly a week span, uh, or at least several days to listen to everything. But 
I can tell already this is going to be an absolutely enjoyable listen because, I mean, I would not classify myself as a diehard Nirvana fan, but I understand the importance of Nevermind. And honestly, the way that I see Nirvana is that, you know, they're just a truly enjoyable band for me. Um, but then again, for those that were there at the time, I can understand, you know, if the context rings much louder than perhaps one that came to appreciate them later on after they had their, you know, basically their tenure. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, and even like I said, aside from just the album alone, I love Nirvana Live. You know, there's such a great live band and the live records that have come out in recent years from them um, in terms of older performances are just phenomenal stuff. So I can tell that this is going to be a very enjoyable set. And then we are getting to the last show featured in this box set. And this is live in Tokyo, Japan, February 19th, 1992. And this is at the Nakano Sun Plaza. Cool band shot there. Here's the back with the track list. And here is the gatefold with some Japanese text and a cool band shot. stuff and then we'll pull out the last LP and there we go very good stuff here and that is all for vinyl but that is not it we have one more component to showcase of this box set and that is make sure I'm not missing anything inside is the hardbound book so Right off the bat, we have a nice sort of almost not exactly gator skin, but it's like a matte gator skin texture um, type of hardcover right here with some nice gold foil lettering, which is very nice. Then we open it up. Oh, wow. Wait a sec. Interesting. So here we have, I'm going to show this on camera first before I even attempt to take it out. So we have a photo kind of slotted inside here. And just to see what this is, because you can take it out. Oh, so it's just like a glossy kind of color, almost like postcard type uh, image, which is very nice. Nice high quality too, like the, the gloss finish on this is very sweet. And then you just put that back in place. And let's dig our way through this. I'm gonna do this exclusively on camera. And I'm going to be basically be looking at the contents of the booklet as I flip through it for you guys. So there is a whole LP by LP breakdown of all the audio contents and various mastering credits and whatnot, along with that shot from the, um, from the insert for the album. And we have lots of photographs here. Uh, this is a cool shot, which features kind of like the... Um, Kind of the overlaying lens type of thing. Kind of reminds me of the um, Pink Floyd Piper at the Gates of Dawn album cover. And then we have, looks like that is a scan of the master, or at least the multi-track tape box uh, featured as part of the, uh, the artwork, which is pretty cool. And I can gladly say that uh, these photos do indeed look previously unseen and unreleased because I've never seen any of these shots before. So this is definitely a feast for the eyes in terms of flipping through it. Definitely have seen that picture before. So I will say, even though this book is not necessarily, you know, it doesn't really go in depth into anything in terms of liner notes and telling a backstory behind the time. But if anything, I think the photos do it more serious justice. It kind of acts as like a time capsule type of piece as you listen to all the contents here. And flipping through the last couple pages. More cool live shots. Very cool. And another cool live.
crap shot there. I feel like that's the running gag of this entire unboxing. More cool live shots. Oh, these are cool. Some nice ambient lighting there and cool backdrops. And there, it says 1991. Here it all happened. So, very beautifully put together. And overall, just an absolutely solid box set. I could only speculate that they might follow suit with, a, uh, with an in utero box set, uh, which probably is going to be coming up next. Also, kind of curious as to maybe why they didn't do one for Bleach. But then again, that was on... Um, that was on Sub Pop alone, whereas this, you know, there's kind of more hands sort of in the kitchen with this one. But nonetheless, you know, I'm a happy camper. I'm pleased with anything. This is a great box set, and I am so excited to dig into the contents of this. So there you guys go. That is my unboxing of the Nirvana Nevermind 30th Anniversary Super Deluxe Vinyl Box Set. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the records spinning. Thank you.